All right, Math 31, here we are with example nine. So as I read through this, try and be on the listen for what were the variables in this problem. All right, so you inherit $100,000. Woo, fantastic. You invest it all in three accounts for one year. All right, the first account pays 4% compounded annually. The second account pays 3% compounded annually and the third account pays 2% compounded annually. After one year, you earn $3,650 in interest. If you invest five times the money in the account that pays 4% compared to 3%, how much did you invest in each account? All right, so first of all, I hear I have three accounts, and they're asking me how much I invested in each of these accounts. All right, and, and for whatever reason, I've got one that's paying 4% interest, 3% interest and 2% interest. Okay, so let's see if we can figure this out. I've got three accounts, so I'm gonna have a three by three. So let me define my variables X, Y, and Z. I'll let X be the amount that I invested into the account paying 4%. I will let Y be the amount of money I invested at 3% and Z be the amount invested that I invested at 2%. All right, we have amount invested at this time 3% and Z equaling the amount invested at 2%. And I have to assume that there's some kind of, I don't know, penalty happening. Like maybe you're not allowed to put all of the money in the 4% account, or maybe if you put it in there, um, you have to leave it in longer than a year. Although even though it says a year, where I'm going with this is if, if this was a real problem like if this was if you really did inherit a thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars put it all in the account that pays more interest don't divvy it up all right so what I why I was thinking that maybe there's a time limit here um, certain times when you open savings accounts if you want to get a higher interest rate you have to leave the money in the account longer so maybe when you put the money in the account at two percent you're allowed to withdraw every month should you want to or if you put it in at 4%, you're not allowed to touch it no matter what for a year. And sometimes when you're dealing with um, money, you want to be able to pull it out every month in case like you ran into a real life emergency. Like, you know, your, your car got in an accident and you had to buy a new car. Well, if your money is stuck in this account all year, that might be problematic. But if you have an account that you can withdraw from every month or every two months, that might make things a little bit more manageable. All right, I got three variables I got to have three equations to go with it. So I inherited $100,000. So that means that this money, whatever I put in here, maybe I put 50,000 here, 30,000 here, 20,000 here, or maybe I just put 10,000 here and I put 80,000 here and 10,000 here. I don't know how I split this, but I do know that X plus Y plus Z has got to be equal to $100,000. Right, so you see the first one, $100,000. I also see this thing about $3,650. So it says after one year, you earn $3,650 in interest. All right, if you're getting interest annually, there's a quick and dirty way just to get the interest. The interest is always your per percentage rate times the amount of money you put in. It, and again, this is when you're going annually. So what I'm trying to say here is if you put X dollars in, and you hold it there for a year at 4%, you will earn 0.04x. That will be your interest. It's always the, the rate, or your interest rate, times your initial investment. All right, so P times R, if you will, uh, or I should say R times P. So I get 4% from the X account. I get 3%, I shouldn't say from the Y account, but 3% of the Y dollars I put into that account and I get 2% in interest from the Z dollars I put into this third account. And we know that has to total out to 3,650. All right, so I'm through two equations. And this says if you invest five times as much money in the account that pays 4% compared to 3%. All right, and this is when I take a step back. This has uh, a, a lot more money in it. It has five times as much as this account. So if I took whatever I had in Y, and I multiplied it by five, that would get me to X, right? So the amount in four, the 4% 4 account is five times as much as the account in the 3%. 
All right. So if I look at this, as I, I'm going through this, I, I'm not exactly sure which method I want to use. I could see arguments for both of them. So what I think I'm going to do, just looking at this, if I look at the first two equations, they're ready to go for elimination, right? Because I have x, y, z on this side, x, y, z on this side, and I have numbers on that side. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the z variable. And the reason I'm going to opt to get rid of the z variable is if I'm just looking at these two equations and I get rid of the z's, I'll have an equation just with x's and y's in it, and then I can pair it up with this one. So what I'm trying to say here is if I, if I call this equation one, equation two, and equation three, and I choose to eliminate z, all right, so I'm initially going to use elimination. So let me write this here. Initially use elimination. And eliminate z. When I take a look at the first and second equation, what I'd like to do is multiply this z variable by negative 0.02 because then the coefficients in front of the z's would be the same, but they would be opposite in sign. So what I'm going to do is negative 0.02 times equation 1, and then I'm going to add that to equation 2. So I'm not going to budge on equation 2. Let me just write this. This is 0.04x plus 0.03y plus 0.02z, and that should be equal to 3650. But I am going to multiply all of these by negative 0.02. So I will have negative 0.02x minus 0.02y minus 0.02z, and let's see what that would be equal to. I will take 100,000, and I will multiply that by negative 0.02. It looks like it's about negative 2,000. Okay. So let's add these together, see what we get. Negative 0.02x plus 0.04x is going to give me positive 0.02x. Um, negative 0.02y plus 0.03y is going to be positive 0.01y. These are going to eliminate. Negative 2000 plus 1650 is going to be, oops, not plus 1650. I said the answer even though I was thinking it. Uh, negative 2000 plus 3650 is 1650. Okay, so now that I'm looking at this, I have this equation here. 0.02x plus 0.01y equaling 1650, and I haven't even touched on this third equation. And with these two, it's actually better for me to now use substitution because x is equal to 5y. So instead of x right here, I'm going to substitute 5y. So let me move over here and say now I'm going to use substitution. So I will have 0.02 times 5y plus 0.01y is equal to 1650. And things have gotten better, right? I've gone down to three equations, three unknowns, and there it is. I've got one equation and one unknown. All right, so let me scooch this up so we can see the rest of my work play out. All right, here we go. So 0.02 times 5, well, 5 times 2 is 10, and i got to move the decimal point once. So this is going to be, or twice, excuse me, this is 0.1y plus 0.01y will be equal to 1650. So I should have 0.11, I believe, but let's check in case you're struggling with this. 0.1 plus 0.01 is 0.11. All right, so we have 0.11y is going to be equal to 1650. When I divide both sides by 0.11, we will wind up with 1650 divided by 0.11. We are looking at 15,000. All right, so I deposited $15,000 into the account that was paying 3% interest. All right, now from here, I know that I deposited five times as much into four, the 4% 4 account, right? X is equal to five times Y. So from here, I know X is equal to five times 15,000. So I actually deposited 75,000 into the account that was paying 4%. Now I'm gonna scooch this up just some more so we can all see what I'm doing. All right, so at this point I have 15,000 at the 3% account. 
I have 75,000 the 4% account. But what I don't know is my Z value. I still haven't figured out my Z value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug that, or I should say I'm gonna plug 15,000 and 75,000 into my very first equation. Let me scooch this back down so we can see it. All right, so my very first equation coming out of here was x plus y plus z was equal to 100,000. So I know x to be 75,000. I know y to be 15,000, so I can solve for z. All right, I'm gonna scooch it one more time. Maybe not even one more time, might be two more times. All right, so at this point, right, I know x plus y plus z has to equal 100,000. So we know that 75,000 plus 15,000 plus z has to equal 100,000. And if I'm going through that, let's see, 75 plus 15 is gonna be 90,000. When I subtract this over, I am getting that z is equal to $10,000, right, at the 2% level. All right, so what did I do with my $100,000 inheritance? I put 75,000 into an account that paid 4%. I put 15,000 into an account that paid 3%, and I put 10,000 into an account that paid 2%. So let's write that up. So I invested $75,000 at 4%. I invested $15,000 at 3% and I invested, what was it, $10,000 at 2%. Okay. So that's how I broke up my inheritance. Uh, and that'll be a good chunk of change. That means, again, if you left it in there for one year, you just gained $3,650 off of it. You didn't have to do anything for that. All right. So where have we been? Where are we going? All right, we have now finished up all we're going to look at in chapter seven. So we talked about how to solve linear systems with substitution and elimination. Any system can be solved either of these two ways. You just have to pick what you prefer. I think most of the time I use elimination, but when the equations present itself, I'll definitely use substitution, like I did in examples eight and nine. Make sure you can identify if a system is consistent, inconsistent, or dependent, right? We've solved a bunch of word problems. That's what applied problems is. We solved word problems with elimination and substitution, and we even branched out into three by threes. All right, so with that, that's all of chapter seven. We're gonna head into, we're gonna go a little out of order. We're gonna head into chapter nine next. I will see you in a few. Thanks so much, bye.